Hello there. As part of this nugget, let's take a look at the volatile keyword in the C language. Now, one of the things that I've heard a lot of C programmers say when asked about the volatile keyword is the volatile qualifier or the volatile keyword uh, helps us stop a variable from getting optimized. So that is true. Uh, but I believe that's a side effect of a deeper deeper effect or a deeper you know underlying thing and that is what i want to explore with you so i have this program here uh, you know simple main function um, doesn't return anything it has got this variable victim set to the value three and the, you know for our experimentation i'm going to replace it with the, um, the next line here which is commented and then there is like a for loop wherein this variable is just incremented you know very straightforward very simple um, so again um, what i'll do then is execute um, gcc and i'm using the risk five gcc because i can reason about the assembly better but what i'm doing here is compiling with an optimization of one level one and then i'm telling the compiler that hey you know just stop uh once you have converted the c program to assembly do not proceed further do not create the object and the machine code we do not want that and why are we wanting to do this so i'm wanting to expose a deeper uh kind of you know underlying system level mechanics or system level uh, effect of the volatile keyword and that we're going to explore using the assembly so let me go ahead and execute this and then uh, kind of, you know, do cat on the main dot s and you see that this is the assembly that the current program translated to. And pretty much uh, it's just, you know, one line of assembly. Uh, everything else here we can ignore for all practical purposes now for, as it stands right now. It just has the return keyword. So it's it what, what the compiler has done here is optimized away everything from that code. The for loop is not required because the incremented value of victim, uh, well, no one uses that, right? Nobody is using the incremented value, so it's useless. And, you know, there is no need for victim in the first place then. All right, so everything was optimized out. Now let's go ahead and comment the first line and uncomment the second one. So we have um, code uh, wherein the victim variable cannot be optimized out. All right, so what does this assembly translate to? Again, the same command, then I do cat main.s. All right, this time around, you know, there is some assembly. And this assembly represents uh, the program that we had written. Now, to help make life a little easier, what I'm going to do is, let's reason about which part is which so this um, the a5 is the cpu register we'll talk about cpu registers in a bit but a5 is set to 4 this tells me that this is representing the variable victim fair and then later we have 10 in a4 so this tells me that this is the for loops uh, limit counter kind of right and then I see a label here, then I see a few other things, then I see a compare, a branch not equal, and I see that A4 is being compared to zero, which tells me we are trying to see if 10 has become a zero, and if not, then jump back to the label dot L2. All right, perfect. Now the real magic or the real significance of the volatile keyword, my claim is, comes up here. And by the way, if we see, we are decrementing a4 by 1 here which is to say a4 had 10 so we are doing 10 minus minus so to speak and then at this point if you notice a5 which had the value of victim is being incremented by 1 all right but then what's happening before and after it is my claim is that is what the volatile keyword leads to so what's happening here is the value is loaded into a5 from the stack right and the same value is stored here on the stack so the four value of victim was stored on the stack and sp is the stack register so the stack pointer but later what's happening here is 
we are loading the value 4 of the victim variable in the CPU register A5, then it is being incremented and that value is stored back. And this is the key. So now let's take a look at how we should imagine the CPU for this problem. So usually we'll have CPU and the CPU internally has something called register files, uh, GPR or GRF in this case, a general purpose register files or GP, usually GPRs, right? general purpose registers. So these are, you know, A4, A5 are registers and registers, you can think of them as local storage inside the CPU for the CPU to do computation, right? So CPU takes from the registers, computes, you know, does some math on them and saves back into the registers, right? And then there is memory somewhere here where we had victim, right? With the value of four. So what the volatile keyword really tells the compiler is, hey, whenever you fetch value of a variable into the memory uh, into the cpu registers after the computation after the manipulation of that value please store it back so that's why we have the load we have the add immediate word i suppose of one and then quickly after that addition after the manipulation it saves back the value using the store instruction so it is load modify store that's what uh, the volatile keyword leads to. The summary then is volatile keyword essentially means that the variable will not be cached in the CPU registers. It will always be sent out of the CPU. Now, one more nuanced thing that you should remember when reasoning about this is we might have memory. Now, we might have memory where the victim variable was set to four. Then we might have some caches, let's say Elvin cache, then we might have CPU. And for the first time, uh, this will be kind of fetched from the memory to the CPU register. I think it was A5. Then when it is modified, so this is the load operation. Then when it is modified uh, and you know stored back, there's a good chance it will be sent out of the CPU, that's for sure, but there is a good chance that this variable gets cached in L1, right? So the victim now li lives here um, with the value of 5, right? On the next iteration, it will be loaded from here, modified and saved back to the L1 cache. So what I'm trying to get at is the key is not that the variable will not be cached at all. The key is that the variable will not be cached in the CPU. It won't stay within the CPU. It will be fetched, it will be modified, and manipulations will be done, and it will be sent out of the CPU. It may go and live in some form of cache. That is a possibility. It won't be in the CPU is the surety. All right, then, you know, unrelated to the volatile keyword but let's say you wanted to go ahead and also say hey you know i don't want it to be cached in l1 also how do I, how do i go about achieving you know that so that comes down to hardware level configuration right we have to specify to the hardware that hey you know certain addresses are not allowed to be cached you know then uh, you have this true transparency of from the main memory to the cpu and the value when sent back goes to the memory. But again, not caching at, at, at all is a system level hardware configuration that we might have to do. You have to write separate program for that. But if you do not want the variable to be cached in the CPU register, and that is the key, then you have to specify that variable to be volatile. So, you know, the claim that volatile keyword ensures that you're um, variable is not optimized out well that is correct but this is then the underlying mechanics of it this is what it really means behind the scene so yeah with this i'll see you in the next one